Welcome to the presentation on dementia care during the COVID-19 crisis. Does having dementia increase the risk of acquiring COVID-19? Most likely, having dementia does not increase the risk for acquiring COVID-19, which is that respiratory illness that's caused by the new coronavirus, just like having dementia does not necessarily increase the risk for acquiring the flu. However, some dementia-related behaviors, an increase in age, and common health conditions that often accompany dementia can increase the risk of not only acquiring the COVID-19, but the outcome and the complications that can occur with it. Dementia doesn't travel alone, means that those typically who have dementia also have other health issues. Health issues, heart issues, respiratory lung issues, dehydration, depression, those kind of things are what we'll see when we have a client who has dementia. An example of somebody who has dementia-related behaviors that can increase the risk of acquiring COVID-19 would be somebody who has Alzheimer's disease and they might forget to wash their hands or take other precautions to prevent the illness, staying six feet away from somebody, wearing a mask. This might be a little bit more difficult if you're taking care of somebody who has Alzheimer's disease or other dementias. Additionally, diseases like COVID-19 and the flu can also worsen the cognitive impairment that we typically see with dementia. Tips for taking care of the client who has dementia. As I stated earlier, for people living with dementia, an increase in confusion is often the first symptom of any illness. If a person living with dementia shows rapidly increased confusion, it is advisable that you contact the client's healthcare provider. If the person is having difficulty breathing or a high fever, it is recommended that that patient or that client go to the emergency department. If they're not having difficulty breathing and they don't have a high fever, it is advisable that you call the doctor and the doctor might be able to treat that person with a telehealth appointment. The telehealth appointment is also a good alternative for a regularly scheduled office visit too. People living with dementia may need extra reminders and support to remember important hygienic practices from one day to the next. One example of this would be hand washing. So consider placing signs in the bathroom or in the kitchen to remind people with dementia to wash their hands with soap for 20 seconds. Maybe you can demonstrate hand washing, washing your hands alongside with the client. Maybe providing a warm washcloth with soap on it already, giving it to your client and letting them wash their hands with that. Alcohol-based sanitizer with at least a 60% alcohol can be quick alternative to hand washing if the person with dementia cannot get to a sink or wash his or her hands easily. Tips for you as the caregiver to keep yourself healthy. As the caregiver, you want to make sure that you pay special attention to flu or pneumonia-like symptoms, either in yourself or others, and report them to a medical professional immediately. This might be something as a cough, a fever, a paleness, maybe they're complaining of shortness of breath, anything like that. Also avoid close contact with people who are sick. You yourself should avoid touching your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. If you're sick, please try to stay home, and if possible, try to work from home. Washing your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, especially after going to the bathroom, before eating, and after you're blowing your nose, coughing or sneezing, or your hands are visibly dirty, is well advised. If possible, cover your cough or sneeze with a tissue, then throw the tissue in the trash, and certainly wash your hands after. If soap and water are not readily available, use an alcohol-based sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol, and once you, be, once you come in contact with a sink, wash your hands with soap and water. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces using a household cleaning spray or wipe. It is advisable to let the surfaces dry for at least five minutes then before wiping it off with a wet paper towel or a wet towel, especially on counters where you're going to have your food. 
Now I'm going to review some of the best practices when taking care of people with dementia. One of the things that's really important when taking care of somebody who has dementia is reinforcing the, the importance of their life story. Take time to get to know the client, what their likes are, what their dislikes are, what their food preferences might be, what their hobbies are, what did they used to do per, for, for a profession. Also, keeping routines as normal and predictable as possible is also a good idea. You might try to have an index card with the title of Top 10 Things About X, your client. Have the family fill it out. Top 10 things about what the client likes to talk about, what the client likes to do, what kind of foods do they like to eat. Another best practice is to remain calm. Remaining calm is contagious. Individuals with dementia often use the energy of people around them to make sense of a situation. For example, if a caregiver has anxiety, the senior might feel it as well. Remembering to stay calm and find ways to relax, such as deep breathing, can be both beneficial for the caregiver and the client when navigating these uncertain times. Another point for best practices is trying to limit the amount of COVID-19 related programming the senior watches on TV. Sometimes this can become very overwhelming for them just to see these news clips over and over. Try to use simple language to describe the situation, such as there's a bug going around, it'll be fine, we'll stay home for a while. Try to do activities together, maybe folding the clothes, sorting the laundry, organizing pictures, help them to sort their silverware when emptying the dishwasher, anything like that. Another good practice is to try to play music that the client enjoys from the era that they remember. Playing music for the client really can touch that client in ways that we have not seen before. If you would like more information on taking care of the client, with dementia during this COVID-19, they're listed here on the slides.